Any brand, everywhere. Amongst all watches, Titan is the winner of the Red Dot Design Award, which is equivalent to the Oscar Award in the film world and holds the record of the slimmest watch in the world. Titan is the fifth largest watchmaker in the world, sold in 32 countries and has over 1,000 varieties catering to more than 135 million customers worldwide. Why don't you be one of them? Titan is now in Bhutan with Kushu Enterprise, the sole distributor. Visit us at Kelwang Building near Clock Tower in Thimpu. We have genuine Titan watches for all, from school-going children to office goers to armed force personnel to sportsmen with contemporary to classic designs. You can get your choice of watch at Titan. Get your Titan from Tashi Commercial Corporation in Penciling, Gelifu, Samdup Jongkar, Paro and Thimpu, Bhutan Distributor in Penciling, Choden Songkang in Mongar, Tsering Doji General Store in Tashigang, and Royal Bhutan Army Canteen in Thimpu. A Titan watch is not only a timepiece, but also a piece of jewellery with a sentimental value. Get a jewel for yourself and for your loved ones at MRP ranging from 450 to 25,000 Neutron. When you choose Titan, you are choosing a lifetime companion you can depend on every day and every season. And welcome to another fun episode of Do You Know Your Child? I'm your host, Choni. Sometimes we notice that something doesn't feel right with the child, but we get distracted. We are all very busy, it's true. We have great pleasure and responsibilities pulling us in too many directions. The child who seems a little off or not himself, snappy or more quiet than usual, is trying to tell us something. But it is easy to tuck this information away in the back pocket and only realize that something is really wrong when a crisis occurs. We then think back and recognize that the signs were there. We were just too preoccupied to pay any attention. Let's get an update from our last week's participants and see how well they're doing. On the show, I committed that uh, I'll give more time to my daughter and listen to her. and. Uh, Yes, uh, sometimes I become busy, but uh, when I'm at home, I always make sure that I talk to her. And uh, from the time that we came on the show, uh, the commitment that I made, I think I fulfilled to a certain extent because I always listen to her, uh, her needs and uh, also the, her uh, changes in her behaviours, then why she changes, what are her likings, dislikings, I also always discuss and uh, find out why she likes certain things, why she doesn't, doesn't like certain things, why her needs are changing. I think I, I, think I made, a, uh, made up my commitment to a certain extent. This book tells us about how his, the food to Kelpo, his majesty, Chikmi Singh Ibaju, how he devoted his time for the country and gave much more facilities than we could ask for him. Making her eat fruits was uh, very difficult for me uh, before we uh, made a commitment. Uh, now after she made a commitment, now she's trying her best and it has improved to a lot. Uh, basically she was eating apples, bananas, now she's trying out with other more fruits. I explain her and even her mom explains her about the benefit of eating different kinds of foods, the different kinds of vitamins and the nutrients that you get from the different fruits. I think she has improved a lot. I always thought that I was doing enough for my daughters and my families. And uh, when we came on the show and when she said that we need to have uh, more time and quality time, I think I realized that it's more important to have quality time than the longer time. So that is the difference that I found out. And even if I get few hours or few uh, minutes to spend, I always make sure that I discuss with them openly and try to know their 
needs and their uh, views on the certain issues and uh, things. Like. Don't allow problems with your child to fester and grow. Open your eyes and observe if a child seems sad, withdrawn, distant, more moody than usual or angry. Recognize if there seems to be a greater confrontation between this child and his siblings, if friends stop calling or coming over, or if the child can't seem to find his place in school. Because, before you know it, half the year can go by and what could have been a small problem has now become a situation that requires major time and investment and causes terrible aggravation. Let's meet today's family. My name is Mrs. Suki Palmo. I study in TPS. I study in class 5A. I'm coming to the show with my mother and she is a writer. My favorite book by my mother is um, Weaving a Rainbow. Well, it was my on my daughter's insistence, I should say. She has been watching this show for quite some time now and then she really wanted us to go. And then when I received the call from the producer, I couldn't say no. So I think those are the two reasons why we came to this show. Mr. Sky found, fumbled, and finally threw down some blue color. Young Chin caught it in her bag and thanked him. Bright sun shining in the sky and asked, Miss, Miss Sun, can you please? And came across an orange orchard. Welcome to Do You Know Your Child. Um, my first question, as always, is Do you know your child? I would like to believe I do. Okay, all right. I have a bunch of questions for you. Mm. and. Um, but before I go into the questions, why don't you tell me a little something about yourself and your family? I have three kids, mm -hmm. two daughters and one son. Okay. And then the beautiful thing about us is we all love reading. Now, you tell me, um, when did you start reading? Actually, my affair with books, I call it, mm -hmm. it happened uh, since the time before I actually went to school. Oh. Yes, because I was brought up in a family which owned the only bookstore in town. Wow. And then I am very proud to say that it still is the only bookstore in Samdu Jonkar town. Oh, so you grew up in Samdu Jonkar. Yes. Uh, in yes. the only store, bookstore mm -hmm. in town. Yes. And is that the place where you started your affair with, with the books? books. Okay. Right. And you, you, you're a writer. I tend to tell myself that, yes, okay. I'm a writer. No, you are an established writer, especially for children's Thank you. book, right? Thank you for saying that. I, we've been giving out one of your books, Monster. Monster in my room. Yes, yeah. and I went through it. I mm. love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I would read it during the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But yeah, it's a really nice book, mm -hmm. and I uh, sadly have only read one of your books. Okay. But um, tell me, how did you decide to be a writer? Well, it happened in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I was teaching then. Um, I taught in different schools for 10 years and then in 2014 I chose to opt out of teaching mm -hmm. because of some things that came up. Mm -hmm. But yes, my writing career started in 2012 okay. and I've been telling everywhere that I go that um, I chose to write because of one thing that happened during the grade 6 students I was teaching in. Mm -hmm. So it was during the class uh, we were doing folk tales mm -hmm. and then I happened to ask my students, can anyone of you narrate a Bhutanese folk tale to me? And sadly, none of the hands went up. Mm. You know, I mean, like, we asked the students, do you know Cinderella? 100% yes. hands would be raised up. And then if you ask about Frozen, even those uh, kids who have not even started their school, they would, they would yes. know. So it was a very sad um, realization for somebody like me who grew up listening to lots of folk tales. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, I need to do something about it yeah. in my own small ways, contribute in preserving mm -hmm. the rich bounty of folk tales that has been transmitted to us orally. Mm -hmm. So th that's when I start, uh, started to think of writing down mm -hmm. yeah. these folk tales. So the four, first four books were folk tales of Bhutan, mm -hmm. fully illustrated for kids, okay. so that they also get a hang of the folk tales that we grew up with. Oh, okay. Now, I, I know you're, you write your books for kids. Why, did you ever think of writing for... Um the youth or maybe the young adults or just the adults? Well, yes, I have already done a novel. Okay. It's, it's titled Lama. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm trying all genres and all mm -hmm. age group mm -hmm. because I don't want to label myself and stick myself to just one genre okay. or one particular age group. So mm -hmm. I want to try out. I see. So I have written for young adults as well, I should say. So which one is, it, uh, is difficult, writing for adults or writing for children? I'll, come, I'll start with the feedback that I get from people. Mm -hmm. uh, when we walk into a bookstore and we see the books uh, all over, and then people pick up the children's book, and yeah. then they read, 
And because we are adults looking at the children's book, people normally say that, oh, this is such simple stuff. Even yeah. I can write it. Yeah. Mm. I don't know whether I have done it or not. Maybe I, I must have done it at some point when I was actually not writing. Mm -hmm. But having written a novel and having written uh, books for children as well, I realized that writing for children is so very mm -hmm. difficult. And because when you write a novel, you can like go on. You don't have to think about, do I really need to use these words? Mm -hmm. you know? But with children, you need to consider what age group you're writing for. Mm -hmm. You need to consider, what do I want to tell? Mm -hmm. How do I tell it? So you have to be very sensitive to everything. So it's very difficult writing for children, I should say. Yeah, I, I, I think I understand what you're trying to say because with children, there's a lot of child psychology. They're yes. very sensitive. Yes. They're very yes. Yes. Um, they're impressionable. So yes. you want to be yes. careful of how to say yes. things, which yes. words. So yes. completely understandable. Right. Now you're a mother of three, mm -hmm. and uh, most of your books are for children. Do you think there's a being a mother has uh, a role in um, the kind of writer that you are? Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely, because uh, this has been a ritual which I started even way before I gave birth to my first uh, child. Mm. I would read children's books oh, okay. when my, I was carrying my first child. Yeah. So I had, re I had read somewhere that you should do that, mm -hmm. so that you're ch it's said that uh, even when your child is in your womb, they can hear you and then they develop oh. this love for reading. So I used to read when my daughter was in my womb only, and then from then on I have uh, started this ritual and we are still continuing. And I'm very proud to say that my two years old son, who can barely utter maybe around five to ten words, mm -hmm. he is totally into books. He loves oh. books. And okay. then his currently favorite book is Dr. Sue's uh, Fox and Socks. Okay, yeah. And then if you come to my house and then ask him, because he cannot read, but mm -hmm. if you ask him, where's the page, Tweedle Beetles, yeah. he will show you the exact page. Wow. Show Slow Joe Crow, he can show you that. So I'm very proud in that. Field. Yeah, you should be proud yeah. because there are very few people, first of all, there are very few children who appreciate books. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe because of the fact that you have started your love for books early, yeah. I think you yeah. can pass that on to yes. your kids. And yes. that's, I think that's a really good habit because reading is, I think, one of those habits that you, you better start early. Yes, because as, as you go by, it becomes difficult to make it, it a is. habit. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad to have you on the show. Um, Thank you so much. Um, I know you, I'm guessing you've watched the show before, but I'm going to go ahead with the rules anyways. Um, I have 10 questions with me. I'm going to ask these 10 questions to you first. Then mm -hmm. I'll ask these questions to your daughter. You've come here with your eldest? Eldest. Yeah. Eldest, okay. And uh, then later we'll tally the answers and that'll be your score. Okay. So are you ready? Yep. Question number one. What is your daughter's favorite color? It has to be either pink or purple. Okay. Number two. What is your daughter's um, favorite activity to do when she's free? She likes to do a lot of uh, this uh, craft things, art and craft things. Oh, okay. Yeah. I call her script dealer because all the time, uh, be it a biscuit cover, a, a, a wrapper, yeah. anything, she'll just pick it up. Uh -huh. She'll take it to her study table, which yeah. hardly looks like a study table, I tell you. Yeah. And then she will be like making things out of it. Oh, really? So, yes. so she's very creative. She is. Do you think she'll be a writer? Because if she loves books mm -hmm. and if she's creative, I think she's going to go along. I think she, it, ha it has more to do with her being on more of the engineering side, I would say. Okay, that's very yeah. creative yeah. too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So she loves to collect. Uh, stuff and then make things out of it okay and then reading would be another thing that she might say because okay. she reads a lot and then watching Pokemon movies okay and all right <laughs> yeah. number three mm -hmm. what is her role number in class it has to be somewhere in the middle because her name is Misatsuki Palmo and it starts from M and is supposed to be so maybe she could be somewhere between um, 15 to 20 okay 15 to 20, all yeah. right. Number four, what would your daughter do uh, from the two? Mm -hmm. Washing dishes or cleaning her own room? I think she loved for cleaning her own room. Okay, all right. Number five, what is your daughter's favorite subject in school? Math. math. She loves math. Okay. Yes. Number six, when is your daughter's bedtime? Normally 9.30. 9.30. Number seven, your daughter, you see your daughter about to open a packet of potato chips right before dinner. Mm -hmm. How would you react? I take it from her and I tell her, no, you're not supposed to eat this now. Now okay. is not the time. I want you to eat your dinner first. So okay. I would take it away. All right. Number eight, would your daughter know your mobile number? No. 
Oh, okay, really? Because she's, I don't know why, but she doesn't know my number or her papa's number even for that matter. Mm -hmm. But uh, my younger daughter, who is in grade one, yeah. she knows both of our numbers. Did you teach your younger daughter your number? Or no, did she just no, learn she, she her? learned it herself. Okay, all right. Did you ever feel like it was, um, it was important to teach your kids your number? Yes, and I've been trying to teach my this daughter as well, but... I don't know, somehow she's not into it. <laughs> she loves numbers, but not your phone yes, numbers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Okay. That's uh, interesting. I never looked at it that way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Number nine. Do you think your daughter would know who our fourth king's firstborn is? I'm sure she should be knowing. She's smart enough to figure that out. Okay, all right. Number ten. Last question. Do you think your daughter would know where our fourth king was born? I'm sure she knows that, yes. Okay, all right. We've answered all the ten questions. Now we'll have your daughter come here. Welcome to Do You Know Your Child, Misa. Misa, is it Misa or Misa? Misa. Misa, okay. Um, very interesting name. Um, but before I go into your name and other questions, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Misa Sukipalmo. I a student in primary school. My, I stood in class 5E and my hobby is uh, playing games and making crafts. Oh, okay, all right. So now your name, coming back to your name, Misa, right? Misa, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, do you know why you have that name? Misa, because my mother thought that I would warm other people's heart and so she gave, it, gave me the name from the Gurum Poetry is one of the eight forms. Okay. And from Dodo Brimbuche. Dodo Okay, mm -hmm. wow. All right. Well, you know what? I think you're one of the. I think you're the only person, only child on my show, who was able to explain why and what their name meant. Because a lot of the people had very, really fancy names, but when I asked them, what does your name mean? Most of them didn't know the answer, which was really sad. But you have a beautiful name and a beautiful explanation to it. That's really good, okay? Now, you said Misa would warm people's heart. Now, is why Misa? It's, it's a charge up term. Oh, really? Yes. When I was growing up in Tashigong, yeah. so during the winters, we would have, like, during the evenings, mm. uh, we would sit around a fire, meet in tin, so yeah. that's called Misa. Oh, okay. Exactly wow. That. Wow, so you, you decided to give her first name. Yes. I had actually called the people in Sikkim and then asked for Dr. Uh, I mean name from Dr. Rinpoche, but um, I think she got the name Tsultrim Palmo. Okay. And to me, Tsultrim sounded too masculine. <laughs> and I thought, let me create something. Yeah. So that's how I came up with Misa. And mm -hmm. Tsoki, it's one of the eight manifestations. Yeah. I believe in Guru Rinpoche a lot. So I took Tsoki from Guru Tsoki Dorji. Yeah. So Tsoki comes from there. And Palmo is what was given to us by Dr. Rinpoche. Okay. So hence the name, Misa Tsoki Palmo. Wow. Well, beautiful. And I'm glad you know the meaning of your name. Beautiful. That's good. So, Misa, do I call you Misa? Okay. I've asked your mom 10 questions about you, okay? I'm going to ask these questions to you. Do? Okay. Are you ready? Yes. But before we go into the questions, I see something out there. Please tell me what this is. It's a Christmas tree. Okay. It's a Christmas tree. Who made the Christmas tree? I made it. Oh, okay. And uh, who is it for? For the show. For the show, okay, all right. So, okay, uh, can I take a look at it? Thank you so much. It must have, how long did it take for you to make this? Only five minutes. <gasps> really? Yes. Wow, you must be really fast, that's good. Well, keep up and um, thank you so much. It's really pretty, we're gonna save it. Um, Misa, I have your first question. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is yellow. Yellow, why do you like yellow? Mm, just, it's a house color. Oh, okay. Any other colors you like? Yellow and blue. Yellow and blue, okay. Number two. What is your favorite activity to do when you're free? Your hobby? I like making crafts and playing games. Okay. Anything else? No. No, all right. Question number three. What is your role number in class? Uh, my role number is 12 in class. Okay. Number four. What would you rather do, wash dishes or clean your room? I wash dishes. Why? Why? Because it's easier to wash dishes and clean the room. <laughs> All right, okay. Number five. What is your favorite subject? My favorite subject is maths and English. Okay, wow. Why do you like maths? Because it's fun. Oh, okay. Number six. When is your bedtime? 
9.30 usually, but sometimes when I'm free, I sleep at 12 o'clock. Here's the situation. Let's say it's almost dinner time. And right before dinner, you open a packet of uh, potato chips and your mom walks in. What does she do? She says not to eat them. Why? It's because I won't eat food if I don't if I eat just... Okay, all right. Okay. Number eight. Do you know your parents' mobile number? No. Why? I don't get to look at my parents' number for much, so... I think... It's very important that you know your mom and dad's number. Question number nine. Who is the firstborn of our fourth king? The fifth king? Jimmy's guessing I'm your own too. Number ten, your last question. Where was our fourth king born? He was born in Dejin Choling Palace. Okay, all right. Have you ever been to Dejin Choling? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. So yes, he was born in the Shincholing Palace, okay? And uh, for question number nine, before our fifth king was born, it was Ajit Chimiyanzo, his elder sister. Dupka. Oh. So it was the elder sister and then came um, our fifth king. So with that, you've answered all the ten questions now. Let's take a look at your mom's score. What is your daughter's favorite color? Pink or purple? Hello? What is your daughter's favorite activity to do when she's free? Craft. Craft. What is her role number in class? 15 to 20. 12. What would your daughter do? Washing dishes or cleaning her own room? Cleaning her own room. Wash dishes. What is your daughter's favorite subject? Math. Math. When is your daughter's bedtime? 9.30. 9.30. You see your daughter about to open a packet of potato chips right before dinner. Mm -hmm. How would you react? No, you're not supposed to eat this now. She says not to eat them. Would your daughter know your mobile number? No. No. Do you think your daughter would know who our fourth king's firstborn is? Yes. The fifth king. Do you think your daughter would know where our fourth king was born? Yes. Kitchen Chilling Palace. All right, I now have the score with me. Um, let's take a look at the questions your mom wasn't able to answer correctly. First one was um, favorite color, and you're wearing it. Your mom said purple or pink, but you went with yellow or blue. Why do you think your mom thinks it's purple or pink? Because I'm wearing it just. <laughs> I think you have more purple and pink, but um, is that is that why? Uh, I mean, like, the two of them, my two daughters, they would always be fighting over pink and purple. Oh. I never realized that she would say yellow. Or blue, right? Yeah. <laughs> but with kids, it's always like this. You think mm -hmm. you know them, mm -hmm. but if you ask them, they'll have oh, a completely no. different yeah. answer in yeah. different places. Mm -hmm. yes. So, yeah. Next question was roll number. Your mom took a guess. She wasn't sure. She admitted. But um, she said 15 to 20, but you were two numbers, three numbers mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. ahead. And you were 12, so now you know. Yes, I do. Um, the other one was, uh, which would she rather do, wash dishes or clean room? And you said cleaning room, but you said washing dishes. And the last question that your mom wasn't able to answer correctly was the eldest um, child of a fourth king, and I clarified the answer to you. So with that, your mom's score is 6 out of 10. That's a great, great score. Are you happy? Yes, okay, this is a really good score. We'll now go to the commitment part. Um, we'll start with mommy first. Tupka. Well, I think I'm very complacent about my role as a mother because I've given up so much of my everything. Mm -hmm. I even give up the career that I love the most. I, mm -hmm. I think I told in the intro that I used to be a teacher, yeah. but I give that up because I wanted to spend time with them. Yeah. So I think I have this thing notched in my head that I'm a perfect mother, mm -hmm. that often I tend to, you know, not take care of small things like yeah. her favorite color, yeah. which I think that if I am to be labeled as a perfect mother, I need to mm -hmm. keep in touch with yeah. every minute details that they go through and every changes that they go through. Yeah. So yes. Great commitment, and uh, I think only a good mother can correct herself, and you did really well. Um, looking at the questions and the answers that you've answered, um, finding out where you lack, and it is the little things, like her role number, yeah. favorite yeah. color. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, I like your commitment, so good luck with that. Thank now you. let's go to Misa's commitment. Misa, I have in here are three commitments your mom gave, okay, for you. So I just want you to pick one. 
It says, help mom with chores. Are you reluctant? Do you help mom at home? Sometimes, I help. Sometimes, okay. What do you help her with? Washing dishes, sweeping the house. Okay, all right. These are all good skills that you could learn. And not because you're a woman. Now that thing doesn't really work. Woman and girl give responsibility so-so or boys give so-so. It doesn't work like that. You, your brother and your sister should all have these skills whereby you need to know how to cook. You need to know how to stay clean, okay? So helping mom with chores at home will only make you a better and a more um, wholesome person. So do you think you can do that? Yes. Do you think you can volunteer more to help her? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's a great commitment your mom suggested now because um, this is my show. I'm going to give you a suggestion. You said you don't know your mom's number, right? And your dad's number. So this is my request for you to learn your parents' number. So my dear, you've made two commitments. One is to learn your parents' number, right? And the second one is to help mom and dad at home with chores. Yes. Do you think you can do that? Yes. Now let's do with love. Dear Angie, that's what we call her at home, 14th June would always be a day I would celebrate for on that day I realized the purpose of my life on earth. I'm grateful to my Amma for giving me life, but I'm more grateful to you for giving the meaning to this life. My declaration today is of no surprise to you, for you all know already how much Mama loves you. I know you and your little sister feel that my attention is more towards your brother now, but I also know that you do understand that he needs all of our attention owing to the age he is in right now. I'll never forget what you said when I asked you, do you know how much Mama loves you? Your response, I know you love me because I see it in your eyes, sees the beyond that you see. Thank you so much for the wisdom. And while mentioning this thank you, I shouldn't forget to thank you for coming in my life and making me who I am today. I measure my steps based on your expectation of me and that shapes what I become. Thank you and I love you. If you ever find me gone from your life, you know you have the diary that contains all my feelings for you that I scribbled since the time I realized your presence in my home. You're special and I'm very proud to have you in my life. Lots of love, now and forever, your mama. You have a diary? Yes. Since she was conceived? Too. Yes, oh, wow. yes, and she has it now. I've given it to her already. Wow. Now your turn, my dear. Dear mom, you are a really kind and a caring person. You are the kindest person I have ever seen till now. You are the one who gave me love and support. You are an awesome teacher, cool mother, and a nice author. I am very lucky to have you as a mother. I am the happiest person ever since I have been born. You make me look nice in public and inside too. I, I am thankful to you for all the things you did for me. Beautifully read and of course beautifully written. Now we've come to the end of the episode. I want you to focus on this book. Did you read this book before? No. No, okay. This is about a fourth king and I read it and this says all the beautiful things our fourth king did for the country. We also have the beautiful watch from Titan. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. With this, we've come to the end of the episode. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us here. When children feel as if they're gaining skills and becoming self-sufficient, they grow more confident in their abilities. You'll watch their self-esteem take off. Each year, every child should be able to point with pride to a newfound skill or added responsibility that comes with age. Whatever your situation, there are practical and emotional issues to consider as you build your relationship with your kids. We have come to the end of today's episode. We'll catch up with you next week, same time and place. Till then, if you have any suggestions or feedback, email us at parenting at bvs.bt or write to us on our Facebook page. Until next time, bye-bye.